In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the operating systems that Oracle offers. In order to run an Oracle database, you must of course have an operating system running on the server itself, whether it's an Exadata machine or just your home computer. The Oracle database can run on many different operating systems, but Oracle offers two of their own. When Oracle acquired Sun Microsystems, not only did they acquire Sun's hardware footprint, but their software assets as well. This included Solaris, Sun's popular version of Unix. While there was some initial concern that Oracle would discontinue Solaris, the reality was quite different. Oracle continues to support and even expand the capabilities of Solaris. The current version stands at Solaris 11, and Solaris 10 is supported as well. This is Oracle Solaris. One of the really unique things about Oracle Solaris, it runs on more than one chip architecture. Sun Hardware, now Oracle Hardware, uses the Spark chip architecture, so naturally Solaris runs on Spark Hardware. However, Solaris has also been ported to the everyday x86-based chip architecture, which means you can install and run Solaris on commercial-grade hardware, such as smaller to mid-size x86 servers. You can even run it on your home computer. Just to take a look here at some of the things Solaris has to offer. So this is a typical interface that people are familiar with, the Firefox web browser. So this would be just the same as it would be in Windows or Linux or any other operating system. When we want to browse files out in the directories, we can use a file browser that lets us see directories or folders out on the operating system. And when we need to shut down, we simply choose the shutdown option from the GUI interface. In addition to Solaris, Oracle also offers its own version of Linux operating system, Oracle Linux. Linux on Oracle has an interesting history. Oracle was one of the very first major companies to openly support Linux and create software for it. Oracle ported the Oracle database server to Linux as early as the late 1990s, all the way back to Oracle version 8. They continued to support Oracle on Linux for many years. In the 2000s, they released their own distribution, Oracle Linux. Oracle Linux at this point was simply a rebranded Red Hat distribution, which means it was literally no different than Red Hat Linux, except the company logos were changed. Since companies cannot make money by selling Linux itself, most, like Red Hat, charge for support. That is to say, if you have problems, you can call into their support line and get help. By releasing Oracle Linux, Oracle had thrown their hat into the support arena as well. I'll log in. This worked fine for a while until Oracle began to feel that Red Hat wasn't innovating Linux at the pace that Oracle wanted. They also contended with the fact that even though many companies use Red Hat Linux with Oracle databases, Red Hat still refused to actively test Oracle on Red Hat in the same way that they tested other products. This eventually led to Oracle producing a new Linux kernel, the so-called Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel. While still very similar, Oracle Linux compiled with the Unbreakable Kernel had a number of enhancements to improve the performance of the Oracle database. It is Oracle's intention to market this kernel as a better tested, high performance, high availability kernel for running Oracle database. In addition to the Unbreakable Kernel, Oracle still offers Oracle Linux with the original Red Hat compatible kernel. And if you notice here, this is very similar to Solaris. A number of the tools that it comes with, such as SQL Developer, are actually used for managing Oracle databases.